Hey, what is up guys? We're back with another video. Today, I'll be showing you the possible causes of why your cooling fan is not turning on. And it might surprise you the end result of what it was. I didn't have to replace the fan. Now, this might not fix your issue. You might have a bad cooling fan, but this is just my experience and I just want to post it for everyone. That way you can kind of follow the same steps I took and figure out if you really have to replace your fan or if it's the issue that I had in my case. Now, before I start this, I just want to let you guys know that this is for the cooling fan not working this is not for overheating issues this is not for thermostat this is not for coolant being low this is not for water pump not working this is specifically for the cooling fan even though the cooling fan not working will cause the car to overheat this is not about overheating issues this is about the cooling fan not working and now you might ask what are the symptoms of a bad cooling fan now keep in mind i'm saying bad cooling fan just to keep it simple it doesn't necessarily mean that your cooling fan is bad now the first symptom is gonna be you're gonna get a coolant temperature warning light it's gonna look like this and that means that your coolant temperature is really hot the second symptom you might get is that your car is gonna start blowing really hot air even with the ac on and the reason being is that your car knows that it's getting really hot and it's blowing hot air to get rid of the hot air on the engine bay and it's throwing it out to the cabin now how do you 100 percent check that your cooling fan is not working well it's really simple you want to look at the coolant temperature temperature and you can do that with a scanner tool or you can do it in the cluster and i have a video that shows you how to get into the settings so you can look at the temperature now by doing that you want to check the temperature you want to drive around and you want to get your car above 90 95 degrees you want to get out and you want to open your hood and make sure that your fan is running if your fan is not running even with you being at 95 degrees and higher that means your cooling fan is not working properly now let's stop all the talking and get to work the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the fuses for the cooling fan now let's get to the fuse box now behind this you're gonna see something like that you want to pull it out and this will basically tell us what fuses we have to check for the cooling fan now here are the fuses that you want to check you see a drawing of a thermostat you want to check the fuses 28 33 and 92 92 is going to be the big fuse for the cooling fan and the one for the fan itself is going to be the 88 one and if you go to the back it shows you where the fuses are located we have the 28 on this side we have the 33 right here and we have the 92 the big one on this side we also have to check the 88 one now you want to grab your tester you want to grab this end and we're going to connect it to the side of the door and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start checking all the fuses so we're going to start by checking the 28 and make sure that you check both sides of the fuse you see how the fuses have one metal part on one end and one on the other end you want to check on both of them don't check just one because that means you're getting power to one, but it doesn't cross to the other side. So you want to make sure you check both sides of the fuse. Now we want to check the 33 one. Good on one side, good on the other side. Now we want to check the 92, it's this big one. Good on one side, good on the other side. Now we're going to check fuse number 88. good on one side good on the other side and now we're done we made sure that every single one of our fuses is not blown and this is basically the fastest way to check them instead of pulling every single one of them and checking that they're not blown this is the fastest way to do it now we're gonna move up to the next step got it guys so now after checking the fuses the next thing you want to do is you want to remove everything that's in your way like the cover the thing that's up here and once you remove that this is what you're going to be able to see you want to inspect the cables going into the cooling fan so here's the socket and as you can see i already did this you can see the difference between the new electrical tape and the old electrical tape so what you want to do is you want to unwrap everything and you want to make sure that the wires are in good condition as this can be a possible cause of the cooling fan not turning on you want to go ahead and inspect them make sure that they're not corroded there's no shorts anywhere this is the farthest i checked as most of the rips that i had were doing this whole part 
If you have any more rips going this way, you might wanna go ahead and check them, make sure that it didn't touch the cable and the cables are in good condition. Now let's just say you go ahead and check the wires and everything seems good. And the next thing you wanna do is you wanna unplug the fan Here we go. And you wanna go ahead and check the voltage on it. You can tell which one's the negative one and which one's the positive one by looking at the wires that are going into the socket. And you wanna check the voltage. And we are getting 1248, which is good. This socket should have power at all times. Then the next thing you wanna do is you wanna check the signal wire and we get three 51. Now is that bad? Is that good? Well, it doesn't matter what you get on the signal wire Since the voltage is gonna change on what speed the fan should be at so whatever you get on the signal wire It doesn't really matter and now that we're done checking the voltage the next step is we want to check the continuity So you want to move this setting All the way to the continuity setting and basically what continuity tells you is if there's a short on the wire, if it's able to provide power at a constant rate. So let me just give you an example. Now what you're gonna hear is gonna be a beep. And that beep is basically telling you that there's continuity, meaning that we don't have any rips or any shorts on the wire and that the wire can have a constant rate of power. There we go once again. So now, we're gonna check the continuity on the positive cable. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna have one pin on the positive side, in this case, the right side, and then we're gonna go ahead and have the other wire touching the positive side for you to jumpstart the car. And, and that basically is gonna tell us that the positive wire going all around the front of the car has a healthy continuity. And there we go, the positive wire is good. Now we're gonna go ahead and test the negative side. Now you guys see this cable right here? This is the negative cable going into the cooling fan socket. You might wanna check the ground on this cable as some people had had issues with that nut being loose and not having a good negative connection. So we're gonna go ahead and check the continuity from the negative side of the socket and this negative side on the frame rail. And there we go. We have good continuity on the negative cable. The next cable you wanna check is the terminals on this side. Because as you can see, the positive, there's only one positive cable on this side. So this basically goes all the way to this box. And from this box, it comes out, it does a U-turn and it goes to the socket. So we wanna check the continuity going from the cable from the box all the way to the one in the socket. There we go, we have continuity, and there we go, we also have continuity. Now that we've checked everything, now there seems to be nothing wrong with the cooling fan system, except testing the fan. Now, I will not be showing you how to test the fan, as I do not know how to do it, but I will tell you what my issue ended up being. If everything seems good, like it is on my car, you check the fuses, you check the cables, you check the continuity, you check the voltage going into the cables and everything seems good, you might be thinking that you have to replace the cooling fan. But let me tell you what my issue was and how I fixed it. So this guy was my issue. Before you buy a new fan, you might wanna buy one of these and replace it. Since this part is only $21 at FCP Euro, you might as well go ahead and try to replace this. And for those who don't know the location of this part, it's literally right there. So that's the part that you might want to replace. As you can see, it's the same part. And if you're looking at the engine, it's going to be right there. So there we go, guys. If you guys, if you guys are having issues with your cooling fan not turning on, you might want to replace this guy. It might save you buying a $350 fan like I did. Thankfully, I did not replace it. If you look at many forums, a lot of people have replaced the fan before checking this out or checking another issue out. So that's how I did it, fixing my 335D with a $21 part that prevented the cooling fan from turning on. I hope this helped anybody out. Until next time.